Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mitch. Last week, Debian came out with a new release, Debian 12. So today, I'm going to show you how to install it. And I'm going to show you all the post-installation changes I like to make after installation. And I'm going to install it with the Cinnamon Desktop and the Awesome Window Manager and some of my configurations and everything that I like to do. So, let's get to it. So we're at the Debian website and this is the first main page that you come to and I recommend downloading this one right on the main page. Now this is a net ISO so it's only 700 and some odd megabytes of RAM but with this one you won't be able to experiment with the system or play with it. All you can do is install it but the one thing that's good about this one is that in six months down the road if you want to use this ISO to do an installation, when you do your installation in six months from now, you'll be totally up to date. You won't have to do any updates because it's a net install. Now, if you want, you can go scooting around the website. It's a big website and the website is kind of like a, a maze, but they do have other uh, ISOs that you can download, ones that you can actually play with and experiment with to see if you like it. But I like the net install. So what you're going to do is go to the main page, Hit download, click on this one here, net install, and download it. So let's get into our installation. I'm in Vert Manager. It is the virtual machine that I use. I'm going to create a new installation. So at this point, let's make this full screen. You have 20 some odd seconds to do something. So use your arrows to go down. So you have install and you have graphical install. They're both pretty much the same. And I've gone into both of them. And the thing is, is that this install, even though it's pretty much the same, the font is not good and it's hard to read. So I'm going to go with this graphical install, which is, like I said, as far as I could tell, it looks like it's the same thing because I went through both. But this graphical install is a lot easier to read and it's better for the screen. So I'm going to go to that and I'm going to hit enter. And it's just booting up. So you can use your arrow keys and I think your mouse works in this. Yeah, that's the other thing is in the other install, the mouse doesn't work. But it's pretty much the same install. So I'm going to go with English. I'm going to continue. And it's down at night, United States. I'm going to go to Canada. So anyways, we're going to go and continue because I'm in Canada. And the key map, uh, just, let's just keep it at Canadian. Let's just keep it at American English. And let's go through. So it's just going through some configuration, checking out my system. Now, the thing is, is that this install is going to take an hour. So... What you could do is, oh, let's, okay, so now it's asking me for a host name. I'm going to leave it at Debian. Uh, this is something you can change after the installation. It's really easy to do, and you can do it in a terminal. I'm going to leave it the way it is, because that's good enough for me. Let's continue. I'm going to skip domain name. Let's continue. Now it's asking me for a root password. Now the thing is, is that when you install Debian, it doesn't automatically Give your user sudo privileges after the installation you got to go and do it and i'm going to show you how to do it it's really easy it's not hard i'm going to do it in a terminal and actually it's the same way you do it as i've shown in my arch linux videos if you watch them so i'm going to put a password in here and i'm going to re-enter it and i'm going to continue now it's asking for my real name. I'm just going to put in Mitch. And I'm going to continue. Now select a username for the new account. Well, my user is going to be Mitch. Let's just leave that there. Now it's asking for a password for Mitch. So it's going to give a password for Mitch, but it's not going to give sudo privileges. Like I said, we're going to do that after the installation because after the installation, I'm going to do a major post installation, making changes that I like to change, make in the system. 
So let's do uh, a password for Mensch. And I'm going to do another password for Mensch. And I'm going to continue. Now, it already knows I'm in Canada and it automatically knows that I'm in the Eastern. So I'm just going to continue. And it's partitioning my disks. And you have different options here. I'm just going to go with the first option. You can do a manual partition, but I'm just going to go with guided use entire disk. Continue. It's recognizing my virtual drive, 42 gig. I'm going to continue. Now it gives you the option of doing a separate home partition or this other one at the bottom. I'm just going to go with the recommended one. Even though I'm not a new user, I'm going to go with this. This is the one I like. Let's continue. And finish partitioning and write changes to the disk. I'm going to continue. Now, if you notice here, it says uh, it's telling you what it's going to do. And the de right changes to the disks, the default is no. Now, the reason why the default is no is they're trying to protect you in case you change your mind or in case it turns out when you're reading this stuff, in case you, it turns out you asked it to do instead installation on the wrong disk. So I'm going to click yes, because this is the drive I want, and I'm going to continue. So it's partitioning the disk. Now it's installing the base system. Now, the thing is, like I said, this installation is going to take an hour. So, you know, you can go and do something and go eat dinner, go take a shower, clean the house. But I wouldn't go out to work. I wouldn't go out with friends or go out to the park because it's going to be about, I don't know, three to five times during the installation when it's going to stop and it's going to ask you to answer some questions and click the, some things on with your mouse. So you want to stick around the house. Um, you don't have to sit at your computer the whole time. But if you go out to a restaurant or you go out to work, what's going to happen is you're going to come back and the system is going to have, the system will have stopped because it's waiting for you to answer a question and your installation might only be half done. So like I said, go and do something around the house, but be prepared to stick around for an hour. Now, why does it take an hour? I don't know. So like if you do a Linux Mint, even a Linux Mint based on Debian only takes maybe 10 minutes to install. I've installed MX Linux. Now MX Linux is also based on Debian and I've installed MX Linux in five minutes. So I don't know why this takes an hour to install, but it does. That's what it is. So during this installation, I'm going to pause the video. And when it arrives to the time when you have to answer a question, I'm going to turn the video back on and show you how I answer the questions and then pause it again. I'm not going to make you make a video where we sit through an hour of installing the system. Now, the other thing is, too, is once the system is installed, you don't have to do anything to it. You can just use it the way it is if you want. But when I install Debian, as I do with Archer or Linux Mint or any other system, I make changes to the system because I like things the way I like them to be. So I'm going to install the system with the Cinnamon desktop and the awesome window manager and with the cinnamon desktop in Debian when you install it in Debian the same as in Arch Linux it's but ugly so I'm going to configure the cinnamon desktop the way I like to do it in all my uh, computers and the way I've done it in many many videos I've done it already but I'm going to do it again because maybe there's people watching this video who haven't watched my older videos so I'm going to configure uh, change cinnamon the way I like it to be. Now, of course, it's easy to do because there's no configuration file. It's all mouse driven. It's all in the graphical environment. So I just, I'm going to show you all the different places I go and the menus I go in to change cinnamon to make it look nicer, to make it with the dark theme and 
to, you know, install the weather app and do the things I'd like to do. And then I'm going to install the awesome window manager. Now, of course, the awesome window manager comes with the Debian default uh, theme or, or configuration file. And the Debian configuration file has more to it than the Arch does. But still, I'm going to change it to my standard awesome window manager configuration file. So it's going to look like my awesome window manager in my Arch system. And of course, I'm going to make some other changes to Debian as well. I'm going to change the shell from Bash to Zesh. Uh, I'm going to get rid of GNOME terminal and, and make the X term terminal look nice like I have in my art system. I'm going to make some other changes as well. I'm going to install some other programs uh, and so forth. So that's what I'm going to do. And of course, I'm going to have uh, chapters in this video because this video is probably going to be a good hour. So I'm going to have chapters. So when you're watching it, you can jump to the section you want to jump to. And if you don't want to watch the whole video, you don't have to. So now I'm going to pause the video and come back when the first when the system is asking me to answer the first question. See you soon. And I'm back. So this is the first question it's asking me. Do I want to scan extra immediate installation? And the answer is no. So I'm going to leave it at that. Let's continue. Now, it's asking to configure the mirrors. So it recognizes that I'm in Canada. So I'm going to leave it there. And it brings up some mirrors that are from Canada. Now, usually I use these two, UBC and Waterloo. And they're both university mirrors. And the Waterloo is closer to me than the UBC one because I'm in Toronto. And this university is in the city of Waterloo, which is not too far from Toronto. This UBC university is in Vancouver. So I'm going to use the Waterloo one, but I've used both. And I'm going to click it on and I'm going to continue. And I'm going to leave this one blank. Let's continue. And it's configuring app. And I'm going to pause it and come back when it asks me the next question. Okay, so it stopped and it's asking me the next question. Do I want to participate in a survey? You can say yes or no. I just leave it at no. Continue. Okay, now it's asking me if I want to install some desktop environments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unclick this Debian desktop environment. I don't want it. I'm going to unclick no. I don't want that. I'm going to leave standard system utilities clicked on and I'm going to click on the cinnamon cinnamon. So right now this these are the only two things I'm going to install is the cinnamon desktop environment and standard system utilities. Now at this point it doesn't give you the option of installing any window managers. So after my installation, I'm going to go into the terminal and install awesome window manager. So I'm going to hit continue. And I think it's going to be a while now before it pauses to ask the next question. So I'm going to pause the video and come back. See you soon. So I'm back. And it's asking me if I want to install Grub as my primary boot drive. And the default is yes. So I'm just going to say continue. And now it's asking me if I want to enter the device manually or just put it to here. So I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to continue and it's installing grub and we're almost done with the installation and then I'll continue the video with my uh, post installation changes. So I'm just going to pause it again until we're ready to reboot or it might be asking me another question. I'm not sure. Anyways, I'll be back and I'm back. So the installation is complete and it's asking if I want to reboot. So I'm going to hit continue and it's going to reboot. It's unmounting and it's rebooting. And we are in the system. So I'm going to type in my name, Mench, put my password in and we're going to log into our freshly installed Debian 12 with the cinnamon desktop. Now you have to remember that 
The Cinnamon Desktop, when you install it in Debian or Arch Linux, it's but ugly. Now, when you install the Cinnamon Desktop with Linux Mint, it's themed and it looks really nice. But in Arch Linux and Debian, it's but ugly, so I'm going to make changes. Now, the changes that I'm going to make in the Cinnamon Desktop, you don't have to do. I just like to do this, whether I'm installing Cinnamon in Linux Mint, Debian, Arch Linux, Manjaro, or any other system. So I'm going to make these changes. And the first thing I want to do is change the display. So we're going to type in display, and you only have to do this because this is a virtual machine. If you're running on bare metal, you don't have to do this. So I'm going to change this to 1360 by 768 because I like things to be large. And it also makes it easier to see it on the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's put the volume up. I get rid of the printer because I don't have a printer installed. And I change the clock. I take off the 24 hour and I put the date. So the next thing I want to do is go into themes. And I'm going to go to here. And before I do that, I'm going to add and remove. So I'm adding and removing, I'm adding themes. I'm not removing any. And of course, like I said, these things you don't have to do. Um, Adara, I just like to make it a little prettier. Let's download the Adara Dark. And let's go here and let's install it. Oops. There it is there. Let's change that. Now let's go to fonts. Let's go to settings. Let's go to font selection. Let's change this to bold and crank it up from 9 to 11. And another thing I want to do is go down here and go to applets. Get the weather app. Let's download my applets. It's just going to take a second. So I'm going through the cinnamon changes fast because I've done this in other videos. And like I said, you don't have to do any of this. So I always download the weather app. So I highlight it. Let's download it. So after I've downloaded the weather app, I'm going to go to manage. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on the plus sign and it's going to install the weather app. And I'm going to close this. And there it is. It's 24 degrees. And there's my weather app. Now, um, probably at this point, and you probably should have been one of the first things I did. And this is something you absolutely have to do. And it should be the first thing you do. Is you want to go into the terminal and give your user sudo privileges. So if you don't do anything else that I'm doing as far as post installation, this you have to do. Open up a terminal. So after you open your terminal, you're going to switch user. You're going to go into root. You're going to put your root password in. Then you're going to do vi etsy sudoers. And you're going to scan down. Now, a lot of people like to make um, the user part of the wheel group, and that's how they give the user pseudo privileges. I think this way is just easier. I'm going to copy this root and paste it in. I'm going to delete root, and I'm going to type in match. So I'm giving match all privileges the same as root. I'm going to save the file. And it's saved. Now I'm going to clear the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the terminal now. So the Debian has a package manager. And we're just going to go to it. It's Synaptic. Oops. There it is there. Synaptic package manager. It's an old package manager. It's been around forever. It's very good. Um, 
and it gets updates. So it's not like it's uh, not maintained. It's maintained and it gets updates. So I'm just gonna put my password in and you can install packages this way or you can go to the terminal and install them. So I'm gonna do a search. I'm gonna do a search for papyrus. team there it is there I'm gonna click it on I'm gonna mark for installation now you can click on a bunch of applications and install them all at once you don't have to do one at a time and I'm gonna go also for the materia dark theme let's do this here uh, GTK let's do that there it is there. I'm going to click that one on. Mark for installation. I'm also going to do a search for X, oops, XFCE4. And I'm doing a search for the XFCE power manager because I'm going to need this for. Uh, Let's just scan up. I'm going to need this for my awesome window manager. There it is. Uh, almost. There it is there. Power manager. Now, the reason why I'm doing it in here is there's two reasons. Number one, I want to show you how to use the Synaptic Package Manager. And number two, I don't remember the name of all of these because... Um, between Debian and Arch Linux, when you're installing stuff in the terminal, the packages don't always have the same names. So when you're installing in the terminal, you need to know the exact package name. So that's another reason why I'm installing in Synaptic Package Manager. And then I'm going to go into the terminal and install some of the other things I want to have. And of course, these things you don't have to do. So I got that. And there's one more. I wanted to do a search for LX Appearance. Lex appearance and these are for um, the awesome window manager Lx appearance mark for installation let's mark so let's install all these we're gonna apply I'm gonna apply and it's installing them so just gonna take a moment I think I'm gonna pause the video and changes are applied it's been successful so i'm going to close it now there was another one i want to install and also i don't know the exact name of it in debian so i'm going to search for it U block that's U block origin that's the um the ad blocker for firefox so this is the one you want mark for installation you want the one for firefox if you're using chrome click on this one Let's apply it, apply it, and it's been installed. So let's close it. Okay, so that's installed, so I'm gonna close it. So now I'm gonna go back into the settings. And I'm gonna to go to themes. So I have my Adara Dark on here. I'm gonna to go to here and then click on Papyrus Dark. And here I'm gonna click on uh, let's just do Attawa Dark. And there. So now we're in a dark theme. So now if I go back to uh, the Synaptic Package Manager. Let's click it on. You can ask for my password. And there we are. So now we're in a dark theme. And now we also have in here... We have the whole LibreOffice suite is installed by default, um, but I'm not going to click it on and give you a tour of that. Most people know what that is. For sound and video, we have Rhythmbox. We have a few other things in here. Um, now, another thing I like to do, let's go back into settings and notice my settings are all dark theme now. What I want to do is go into here because I'm going to go into power management and I'm going to turn off the power manager because I don't like it. I'm going to change this to ask. 
this is uh, all up to you. I don't like my system powering down or going to sleep. And I'm also going to go into screensaver and I don't like the screensaver to be on. So I'm going to turn it to never. And it says to lock it. I'm going to turn that off. And now I'm going to go into the terminal and I'm going to go into preferences. And I'm going to make the text a bit larger. Let's go custom font. Let's just make that, uh, see if that's any better. Okay, that's better. Eventually, I'm going to get rid of the GNOME terminal and install Xterm and configure it to the way I like it. But for now, we're going to leave this in here. So what I'm going to do is, in the terminal, I'm going to install all these programs. So I'm doing sudo apt install g uncomplicated firewall. And the g stands for GUI, so it's going to work in the GUI. So by default, Debian doesn't install a firewall. I don't know why, but Linux Mint does and many other distributions do, but for some reason, Debian doesn't. Also, Manjaro does too. But Debian doesn't, so I'm going to install it. So I'm going to install the GUI one. There, if you take the G out, it's just going to be terminal-based. But I'm going to leave the G in to install the graphical one. I'm going to install, so I'm installing the firewall, Vim, Awesome Window Manager, HTOP, NeoFetch, Git, MPV, Zesh, and NumLock. So let's hit the enter button. It's asking for a Mitch's password. And it's installing all these packages. So I'm going to pause the video and come back when they're finished installing. Okay, so it finished installing all those packages. So I'm going to close the terminal and let's open up Firefox. So this is the first time I'm opening up Firefox in this installation. And I'm not going to go through the procedure of setting up Firefox the way I like it to be set up or hardening it. Uh, I do that in every video. Let's just close that. I do that in every video and I'm, this video is probably already going to be too long. And maybe I'll do a new video on hardening Firefox. But you can see the, the ad blocker is installed, uBlock Origin. And it says it's off. Hmm. Let's go to YouTube. Oh, there it goes. Now it's on. Okay, so the ad block is working. Now, if you notice, some of the apps that we have here, um, well, let's say calculator. This is the GNOME calculator. It's not carrying the dark theme, even though I have a dark theme set on the system. Let's go to another one. There's disks. So GNOME Disks is also not carrying a dark theme. So what you want to do is type in this command, and hopefully if I did it right, it should work. Let's try it out. And let's see if it worked. So let's open up a calculator. And now the calculator has a dark theme. So I'm going to close the terminal. There it is. There's my calculator, now has a dark theme. And let's go into um, disks. This is GNOME disks. There we are. GNOME disks now has a dark theme. Now let's just make sure that didn't interfere with Firefox opening up fast. And there's my Firefox. So that's how you make all the GNOME applications have a dark theme, because even though you put a dark theme on, the GNOME applications won't have a dark theme unless you run that command. Now there's another uh, program I want to add, and I'm not sure if this is the right command. It's the file manager pcmanfm. So I'm going to do sudo apt install pcmanfm. Put my password in, and let's install it. Okay, so that's installed. Now, another thing you want to do before we leave Cinnamon, let's go into the settings. and Let's set our firewall. So we installed the firewall before. There's your firewall. Let's click it. It's going to ask for a password. Put your password in. And there it is. Now, by default, when you install this, it's off. So all you have to do is toggle this on. And now it's on. Your firewall is set. 
automatically once you toggle that on it's automatically set incoming deny outgoing allow let's close that and that's it so now i'm going to log out and i'm going to go to awesome window manager so let's log out let's go up here and click this on let's click on awesome put my name in put my password in Let's log in. So now we're in the default Awesome Window Manager. And the Debian default Awesome Window Manager has more configuration to it than the default Awesome Window Manager for uh, Arch Linux. So when you install it in Arch Linux, it looks like this. But when you go to the menu, the menu in Arch Linux is very bare. There's a few things in there, but that's it. The default uh, configuration for Debian is more usable because it has all the apps are in the menu. So for instance, if you go to internet, I know it's kind of small, but if you go to internet, there's Firefox. Let's click it on and see if it opens. And there it is, it opens. So let's close it. So the default menu in the awesome window manager for Debian has a lot more configuration to it. The menu has all your apps are in the menu. Look at this. There's your office program, system tools, settings. So you could just use this awesome window manager the way it is. You don't have to configure it. And as a matter of fact, you could use the art, the one that's installed in the arch that doesn't have all the stuff in the menu. So you just do the super key and P and it brings up stuff here. You could use that as well. But this one is a bit more usable than the one that's installed in Arch. But like I said, you could leave this the way it is, or you could install my configuration files. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to open the terminal. And terminal is open. This is still the GNOME terminal we're working in. And sorry about the bright white. I'm going to change that eventually. So what you want to do is install my configuration files. Now, you don't have to, but that's what I'm going to do. And my configuration files are free. And what you have to do is do this. Do get clone HTTP S colon slash slash get lab dot com slash or to this one. Slash mench dot get. Now, this command is kind of long, but I always have this command in the show notes. So if you do want to download my GitLab repository, if you look in the show notes, you can copy and paste it into the terminal. Let's hit enter. If I typed it right, it should work. And it's cloning it. So now let's clear the screen. Let's cd into mench. Let's ls a. So it's listing all the files here. And what we want to do is run. We want to go into Debian. We want to go into this Debian folder because I changed some of the files to correspond with Debian and especially my Zesh RC file. I took out all the commands that have to do with Pac-Man or Arch Linux. So you want to go into the Debian folder. So we're going to do CD Debian. Now let's LS8. And what we want to do is I'm going to cat run configs. And I'm going to type in these commands. So the first line is going to copy these four files into my home directory. The second command is going to copy three wallpapers into home. The third command is going to copy my awesome configuration file. The uh, fourth command is going to copy these two, my zesh-rc into root. And the fifth command is going to run this command that we ran manually before, to, uh, which I didn't have to do make the uh, gnome applications dark theme so 
So let's close the file. Let's quit. I'm going to change into root. Put my password in. Clear the screen. Let's run the commands. Period slash run configs. And it's done. So you want to sudo them into Etsy password. Put the password in. And we want to change this first line from bash to zesh. And then we want to scan down to mench, which is the, happens to be the last line. And I'm going to change that to zesh. Let's save the file. Let's close that. So let's log out. Let's quit. And hopefully this is going to work. Let's put Mench's name in there. Let's put Mench password in. And now we have the awesome window manager according to my configuration and except for the wallpaper. Well, sometimes I use this wallpaper too. It looks like my Arch Linux install. So if we type in here, we have my menu. There's Firefox. You see the ad blocker is installed. Let's type in, uh, let's do an HTOP. Oh, that doesn't look too good. We gotta fix that. Go to calculator. And the calculator is dark theme. That's good. Now let's go to, um, term and we're going to change this so what i'm going to do is go into period i'm going to go vim period x resources and again this file i have this file set to work in arch linux so in here we have to change this we have to uncomment the second line out you can delete it or uncomment it I'm going to uncomment it, and just so you know, this 15 right here, that's the font. So if the font is too big and you want to make it smaller, you could change it to 12 or whatever. If you want to make it larger, you could change it to 16 or 17. In the second line, we're going to uncomment it out. Sorry, in the second line, we're going to deactivate it by commenting it out for this Debian operating system. So let's save it. Let's close out of there. Let's quit. Let's go back in. Put my password in. Let's open up Xterm. And there we have it. My Xterm, the way it looks in my Arch Linux system. Let's do a NeoFetch. So here we have it. We're in Debian 12. Bookworm. We've been up for an hour and 16 minutes. We have the Zesh shell, we're in the awesome window manager, and we're running Xterm. Now let's clear the screen. Let's do an HTOP. And we're running at uh, 473 megs. So you can see we have four processors. I gave this four gigs of RAM. We're running at 473 megabytes. And I'm using 260K of my one gigabyte of RAM for swap. So let's close that. There's calculator. There's Firefox. Let's log out of here now. Let's log back into Cinnamon. Have to put my, my name in there. My password. And let's make sure Cinnamon is still working properly. Because I did make some changes. So what I'm going to do is... Let's type in the... Let's see that the calculator is coming up at Dark Theme in Cinnamon. And yes, it is. The Dark Theme is working. I want to get rid of the GNOME terminal. I don't like it. So I'm going to do Xterm. And 
And then let's make a big screen. I'm going to just sudo apt remove gnome terminal. Put my password in. Yes. And it's removing the gnome terminal. You can leave it in if you like. Close this. Let's go to Xterm. And I'm going to pin this to my favorites menu. So let's click it on and see if it's working. And I'm also going to go to preferred applications. And I'm going to open up this. And I'm going to go let's see videos. I'm going to be MPV. Music is going to be Rhythm Box. So I'm changing my preferred applications. Music, I'm changing to Rhythm Box. Video is MPV. Let's go to the bottom. So I'm going to make File Manager. I'm going to make PC Man FM my File Manager. I'm going to make Terminal Xterm my preferred terminal. I'm going to close that. I'm going to unpin that. I'm going to unpin that. Let's, let's go to um, Nemo. I'm going to take that out of my start menu or out of my favorites. And I'm going to go to PC Man FM. I'm going to put that into my favorites. Back to favorites. And let's go. So well, let's see, that's my terminal. Looks just like it does in uh now let's go into oh before I do that. Let's go to uh PC Man FM. There's my PC Man FM. And let's go to another thing I want to do is open up my Zesh. Let's open up my Zesh RC. Then Zesh. RC. And there it is there. Now you see there's no numbers here, right? So I'm going to fix that. Let's quit out of there, but let's do it in. Uh, let's go into awesome and do it. So let's quit out of there. Let's log out. Let's go up here and change this to awesome. Let's put my name in, my password, and now we're in the awesome window manager. So let's go to PC Man FM. Oh, so what I got to do here is let's go into custom. A few more things I'm going to do, and then I'm going to close the video. Um, I'm going to make this Matera dark and the icon theme. I'm going to make it papyrus. Apply it. And let's close. I'm also going to go into power. I don't think I set these settings in. Uh... Yeah, I never set these settings in the awesome window manager. So I'm going to make turn my power. Turn off the power settings so that the system doesn't go to sleep. And let's close that. There we go. Now let's go to PC Man FM. There it is down here in the menu. There it is. Dark theme for that. Let's go to uh, Xterm. Now what I want to do is I want to CD into Etsy. That's it. And we want to go into this Vim folder. So I'm going to CD into Vim. I want to LS it. And we don't want to change the Vim RC tiny, we want to change this one here. So I'm going to do uh, Vim, Vim, and actually, I'm going to do sudo Vim, Vim RC. Put my password in. And what I'm going to do is, so after leaving some space, I'm going to type in set NU and set. RNU, just like that. 
and I'm going to save the file. And I'm going to close it. We're going to open up the terminal and let's go into my Vim SRC file. And there it is. We have numbers now. So let's quit out of there. Now, what I'm going to do is reboot. Now, when you reboot in a terminal, in Debian, you have to do sudo. So when you shut down in the terminal or reboot in the terminal, you have to do sudo, which you don't have to do in Arch Linux. So I'm just going to reboot. Let's do sudo reboot. Put the password in, and it's rebooting, and I'm just going to pause. Oh, I didn't have to pause. That was fast. Wow. It's a fast reboot. So we're at the login screen. Let's do um, my name. Let's do uh, my password. And there we are. Let's see how much RAM we're using. Let's just use the menu. So that's not bad. We're, we're down to 300 and a fresh boot. With Debian 12 in the awesome window manager, we're down to 334 megabytes of RAM. Now it runs a little bit less in Arch Linux, but everything in Arch Linux runs a little bit less than in Debian. So we're at 319 megabytes, not bad. So that is my Debian install and post installation. So, that is Debian 12. That's my installation and post installation changes to the Cinnamon desktop, to the awesome window manager, and to other files as well. Now, I didn't put Qtile in here because Qtile is not part of the uh, Debian package manager. I think there is a way to get Qtile in there, but I've never tried to do it. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. I am Linux Mensch.